another glitch is in the books. No, we're not talking about another Nintendo whoopsie that's about to accidentally transform the Melee meta. We're talking about the Tournament series in Glitch 8. If you watched Top 8, you saw a lot of cool surprises, like the best performance a Mario main has had in all of Ultimate, a ton of upsets, and a reverse 3-0 with one of the most unsung characters in Ultimate. That's right, we're talking about how Cosmos beat the Buzz using Corrin. We're gonna take an in-depth look at what Cosmos did to go on a three-game win streak against one of the best players in the world using one of the least popular characters in the game. So this video is gonna be a bit Corrin specific. And look, we know she's not a popular character, but frankly, Corrin mains deserve a little something nice. <laughs> They've been suffering out here. But there's gonna be a lot of general lessons to learn from Cosmos' as reverse 302. Cosmos didn't just win because his Corrin was nasty. He also won through great use of conditioning and great counterpick strategy. And if you want to gain a lot more matchup knowledge so you don't get reverse 3-0'd, head over to ProGuides.com. We've got tons of character guides and resources to help you overcome that rough matchup. Remember, the first step to beating an opponent is knowing an opponent. Before we talk Corrin, let's talk about why Cosmos picked Corrin. Cosmos was down 2-0 to the buzz. At first glance, that looks really really bad. But the thing is, not all 2-0s or 3-0s are the same amount of hopelessness. Getting 3-stocked in back-to-back -back games? Yeah, that's bad news bears. But two close losses? That means you might just need a little bit of gas to get you over the finish line. In both Game 1 and Game 2, Cosmos brought the buzz to the brink of defeat. In Game 1, he brought the buzz to about 120%, one string and one good hit away from a win. In Game 2, he actually had the lead on the buzz and had him on the back foot, but he slipped up and ate an up smash. Cosmos was down 2-0, but he was inches away from being up 2-0. He just needed something to give him a slight edge. That's where Corrin comes in. Unlike Inkling, DeBuzz hasn't faced a ton of Corrins in Ultimate and certainly hadn't prepared for it. Even though Inkling has better tools than Corrin, DeBuzz understood how to fight against a great Inkling. He didn't know how to fight against a great Corrin. And if DeBuzz doesn't know how to fight against Corrin, you can bet that almost no one else does. Cosmos' strategy is a super smart one, but it's also risky. Obviously, the counterpick worked out for Cosmos, but plenty of other players have tried to do such a counterpick and failed. Tweak tried to bring his K roll out against Goblin and lost. Samsora tried to bring out Bayo against Meister and lost. And Zachary tried to bust out Sonic and Corrin to beat Meister as well. Honestly, half the fun of a Meister set is watching him force pro players to bring out their sloppy secondaries. Counterpicking actually worked for Cosmos for two reasons. First, Corrin is a solid matchup against both of the Buzz's mains. And second, Cosmos' Corrin is incredibly clean. Before we talk about how Cosmos plays Corrin to perfection, let's talk about those matchups. Don't get it twisted, Corrin is a secret counter to Olimar or Rosa. DeBuzz puts Corrin as an even matchup for both his characters. But given Corrin's spot on the tier list, it's pretty good that she can contend with Olimar and Rosalina. And Cosmos isn't the first person to beat a top level Olimar with Corrin. Before it was Cosmos versus DeBuzz, it was Kia versus Shutan. Shutan is Japan's best Olimar, and Kia is Japan's best Corrin. Corrin and Olimar have a pretty even matchup, where both characters can really take advantage of the other. Corrin's big hitboxes can wall out Olimar and make it hard for the Pikmin Master to get out of disadvantage. And since Olimar is so lightweight, Corrin's lack of kill confirms doesn't matter as much. All Kia or Cosmos needs to do is land a good hit. When it comes to the Rosa matchup, Corrin does a good job of separating and killing Luma. Rosalina's little star might not look like much, but Luma adds a ton to Rosa's game. When Rosalina lands a hit with Luma, it adds significant knockback, making a lot of Rosa's popular KO options work at lower percents. Luma can also interrupt an opponent's combo and act like a bodyguard for the Princess of the Universe. And most importantly, Rosa can move Luma around the stage, landing surprise hits and controlling a lot of ground. It's a lot easier to beat Rosalina when she doesn't have Luma, and Corrin can separate the two pretty well using her Dragon Lunge, her dash attack, or any of her large aerials offstage. While Corrin doesn't have the raw damage to KO Luma over and over, she has enough knockback and edgeguarding tools to throw Luma offstage. Cosmos will take a hit or two for destroying Luma sometimes, but the trade is often worth it because so much of Rosa's power is in that angry little star. Since Corrin is surprisingly decent against the Buzz's two main characters, Cosmos can use the character throughout the set without much fear of a counter-counterpick. This is the true beauty of the Corrin pick. 
Now that we've set the scene, let's roll the film and see just how Cosmos unlocks Corrin's potential. The first thing we want to look at is the Dragon Lunge, the side special, the pin. In Smash 4, the pin was safer and generally stronger than in Ultimate, so players used it a lot more in general. In Ultimate, there are so many quick options that using the pin in obvious situations is dangerous. The pin is pretty risky when it's used to approach or as a raw move in neutral. In fact, DeBuzz sends Cosmos straight to the stars as soon as he tries to use the pin to approach. But the pin is still a really good option at the ledge, as a mix-up, and after a whiff. In fact, Cosmos uses it to get his first kill of the set with Corrin. The pin still has a very nice hitbox and a lot of knockback, making it great to land a counterpunch that the opponent didn't expect. It's still pretty fast, so it makes for a great aerial mix-up too. Here, DeBuzz expects Cosmos to use one of Corrin's normal aerials and gets caught by the pin and dies. But the best application of the pin is at the ledge. It's great at catching normal getup and hits under the ledge, which lets Cosmos do this. This play is even more impressive than at first glance. Cosmos stands far away enough that DeBuzz thinks Rosa is safe. Then, Cosmos uses the pin as soon as the ledge invulnerability fades. That's a player who's practiced a lot of small Corrin tech and timings. The pin is extra safe at the ledge too, because Corrin can fling herself off stage. While Corrin gives up stage control doing this, she doesn't give her opponent a chance to whiff punish, making the move safer. Now, let's put a pin in the pin and talk about down throw. Corrin doesn't have any top tier combo throws, but she does have a pretty high damage down throw. Cosmos uses down throw a lot in the set, and that's around 15% each time he uses it. The damage isn't super impressive on its own, but it's nice for Corrin because she doesn't have a ton of high damage combos. Plus, it puts the opponent above Corrin. That's big, because while Corrin doesn't have huge combos, she does have huge aerial hitboxes that are great for juggling. Juggling is a big part of how Cosmos puts on damage and gets kill opportunities. The same goes for Kia in Japan. If a character has good aerial hitboxes, they tend to be pretty strong at edgeguarding too, and that's definitely the case with Corrin. Corrin's forward and back air can be pretty useful offstage, but her most surprising edgeguard option is probably her up special. Corrin's up special has a lot more knockback than you'd expect, and certainly more than DeBuzz expected here. Cosmos uses Corrin's aerial pressure to cover a low recovery. In response, as DeBuzz recovers high, Cosmos covers that with up special. The downside is, Corrin's up special doesn't cover a ton of distance, so she can't commit to a deep edgeguard without serious risk. On top of that, she suffers against getting edgeguarded herself. In Kia's win over Shuton, Kia had to use Robin in Game 3 because Shuton went Joker and focused hard on edgeguarding Corrin. Corrin's strong aerial pressure is just the first layer of her gameplay. The second layer comes in conditioning. Conditioning is when you hit or pressure an opponent with a few select options, conditioning them to expect you to use those options again. Then you read the reaction and use an even better option that they aren't expecting. We can see a great example of conditioning in the very last exchange of the set. Here, Cosmos chases DeBuzz down, harassing him with huge aerial hitboxes that DeBuzz can't dodge. Just when DeBuzz expects Cosmos to keep throwing aerials, Cosmos stops, predicts DeBuzz will air dodge to avoid an aerial, and charges a neutral special up to hit DeBuzz right as the air dodge ends. So, Corrin got one of her biggest wins yet. What can we take away from it? The biggest thing might just be that mid and low tier characters have a more interesting place in the meta than ever. In Ultimate, matchups are such a huge deal, and having a rarely seen character that goes even with a popular top tier is kind of a big deal. Counterpicks have a bigger place in Ultimate than in probably any Smash game, and just like how Nairo took Light out with Ganon, we may see more hype counterpick reverse 3-0s in the future. Or maybe all the top tier mains will learn the weird bad matchups and crush the hopes and dreams of low tier heroes. Only time and tournaments will tell. You can catch the future of Smash right here on our YouTube channel, so be sure to subscribe and we'll be sure to highlight every important and hype reverse 3-0 for you in the future.